we roll. Let's do it. All right. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first ever Speed Traveler vlogcast. What do you call these things? Uh, Instagram Live. Instagram Live, okay. And uh, we're really excited to do this. Uh, Speed Traveler, we kind of do a lot of fun things. We go to different car races and show you how to go to these races and have a great time at the races. We explore great roads uh, and some amazing cars, which you can see some of those cars behind us here. And uh, today, for our very first Instagram Live video, we're going to talk about the Formula One race that we just had this past weekend in France at Le Castellet, which was actually quite exciting. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Actually, we want to talk about the cars a little bit first. Well, yeah. Speed Traveler, okay, since we're here, uh, in the background, this is the Speed Traveler secret headquarters. We say secret because we're not divulging exactly where it is. And uh, in the back here, we've got a uh, Mercedes Benny S. There's, there's only three of these cars in the world. Very, very special, wide body 80s Mercedes. Drug dealer car, as we like to call it. <laughs> We've got when we a, took off the door panels, we found a little extra stuff that supplied uh, yeah. a lot of energy. We've got a Cadillac Alvarado Touring Coupe in the background. That was a car that was supposed to compete with uh, Mercedes and BMW. Didn't quite work out so great for Cadillac at the time. Yeah. But also a car that we just used in a recent uh, video we're about to come out with uh, on all the greatest tour spots in LA. And then over my right shoulder, I'm not sure if you can see it, is a 1978 or base car. So we always try to keep a nice, fun collection of cars here at the Speed Traveler headquarters. So uh, I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, but that's what we do. I mean, we like to play with cool cars on cool roads, you know, across this great country of ours. So, I mean, it's very paramount that we talk about these, these cars that are here behind us and the ones that are going to be coming into this secret headquarters uh, as the months progress here in COVID free 2021. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, let's just jump right into the race. You know, we had Le Castellet, the French Grand Prix, this past weekend. Uh, previously was Baku, which very similar tracks, very long straightaways. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it made quality it, it was so, interesting. Oh, it really did. I mean, I love quality. Uh, you didn't know, that's the great thing about this season, is unlike seasons past, like the last eight years, you basically knew what was going to happen unless there was a little rain. Right. So it was so cool to be able to get up and, you know, if anything, I think Max was expected to be a bit faster than he was. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, you expected, but you don't, you got, you can never count out the Mercedes. I mean, no. Toto Wolf runs a tight ship. Well, except for this weekend, which we'll talk about <laughs> yeah, in a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> um, and, you know, you expect the Mercedes to be very, very fast, but Max... Chris Horner, the Red, kind of Red Bull team, they put together the Honda Power is really working for them. It's working great. And Max put in a blistering lap, got P1. But honestly, the interesting thing for me with qualifying was the Ferraris. Oh, yeah. Ferraris and P5 and P7. Yeah. Great, great job for them. Yeah. I mean, Carlos Sainz and uh, Charles Leclerc did a great job. I mean, they seriously outdrove that car's potential at this track. Absolutely, they yeah. did. And they, they were hurt a little bit by the, the different Pirelli mandating a different air pressure for the rear tires, because we saw what happened at Baku. Right. Um, so the Ferraris maybe didn't like it as much in the race, but in quality they were on fire and they outperformed. They, they really did. Yeah, and that's a, you know, it's it's not a big air pressure change. It was about a pound and a half. Two pounds. Two pounds yeah. to, to 21.5 pounds, I believe, was the increase. Right. And it, it doesn't seem like that that's much, that much, but it's substantial, especially when we get these tires up to temperature because the pressure inflates even more because of the air temperature getting hotter inside the tire. Yeah. So it's it's a big deal, and clearly some teams were able to take that to their advantage and work with it, and others struggled. You know, yeah. but Carlos Sainz, man, that was the drive of the day for qualifying Agreed. on Saturday. Agreed. Also, Pierre Gasly was great in Alpatori. He, you know, out, out punched his weight for sure up in sixth spot. Yeah. Doing great this year. Oh, fantastic. He has matured so much. He's a great guy to watch out on the track. And from all I, everything I know, he's really nice outside the track. You know, just a really nice guy. Yeah. And it's great to see a young man like that have uh, great success, you know, Agreed. returning success. Agreed. You know, he, he, he tried really hard when he was with the a, Red Bull A team. Um, nowadays, with the Alcatara team, he's, he's kind of matured a lot, and I think he's just running fantastic. Agreed. And I don't know about you, but I went to bed on Saturday night doing a little rain dance because it was supposed to be a 50% chance of thunderstorms. Actually, it did rain Sunday morning, 
uh, but the track did dry up. But that would have made this race crazy. Well, and I think that also had a, a huge effect on the tires because it did rain. It scrubbed all that rubber, that fresh early rubber that was on the track. So it made it very, very slippery. It did. And we will we'll talk about what that did on the very first lap of the race. Yeah. I mean, the very first lap, the very first turn. Agreed. You know, uh, so qualifying, we had Max Verstappen on pole, we had Lewis Hamilton in second, uh, Valtteri Botas was third with uh, Sergio Perez in fourth. Right. Um, I think uh, Christian Horner was probably a little disappointed in that qualifying performance by Perez. I think he would have liked to have seen him up there between the split the Mercedes. Yeah. Ultimately, it worked out. It worked out in the race, but he, he wasn't, uh, time-wise, he wasn't really close. No, he was four, I think he was all up just a little under a half a second slower. Um, the Lewis Hamilton was three tenths off, which was better than expected. Much better. The Valtteri was four tenths off. You kind of feel for four. Poor Valtteri. He was the fastest all weekend, basically, yes. and then got to uh, qualifying and it just didn't quite happen. And he's being forced to or told to, doing a lot of journeyman work for the team. Uh, we'll talk more about this yeah. in the race, uh, but why don't we talk about turn one? Yeah. Sunday's okay. race. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah. Heavy, a lot of wind. Wind was a huge factor. Yeah. Wind was um, a huge factor, and then the rain in the morning, as you said, washed away all the built up rubber. So turn one, uh, it was a great start. Max and Lewis got an even start, I would say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Max made it to the first turn first, and then he just couldn't, he got a little oversteer, he couldn't hold him in, and uh, went wide. Yeah, and that forced him to chase Lewis Hamilton for a, a majority of the first first part of the race. Yeah. You know, and honestly, to start for me again, I, I have to give a nod to Carlos Sainz and Danny Ricardo with McLaren. Carlos Sainz and Danny Ricardo both really made great starts. It didn't really work out for them. I mean, they got into the deeper part of the first lap, but blistering starts from the, from a little bit further back in the pack. So it was really exciting yeah. to watch. I agree. I, I think stint number one was interesting because uh, Max was able to stick with Lewis for the most part. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the, the knowledge or the thinking going into the race was Mercedes were just going to blow doors on everyone in race pace. Right. And it didn't exactly happen. Max stayed pretty close. No, he did a great job. I mean, the Mercedes have that great straight, straight, straight line speed. And Le Casalet, the, the Paul Ricard racetrack, uh, has really long straightaways like Baku. So you kind of expected them to start walking away with it. But like you said, Max did a great job of staying on the heels of Lewis Hamilton during the race, but I think that also had a huge effect on his tires, being in that dirty air yeah. and working really hard to stay there. Lewis yeah. Hamilton got kind of a, a little bit of a free ride there for a while, being able to control the pace at the front of the race in clean air, yeah. with Valtteri Bottas in third place at this point. Yeah, and Perez was fourth, yes. well, hanging in there pretty well. The Ferraris kind of faded in that first set, you know, first stint. They just didn't like, we had talked about the tire pressures, didn't agree with the Ferrari. Yeah. And uh, they just weren't really there for the first part of the race. No, it was, it was, it was hard to watch because I'm definitely, you know, if, if my heart's in it, you know, I'm a Ferrari fan. And right. my, first, my, <laughs> first, my first experience with Formula One was Clay Rizzoni winning a Formula One race in the Long Beach Grand Prix in 1976. Yes, I'm that old. Uh, and it was just, it was fantastic for me to see and to hear that car just screaming and the big head scoop just skirting by. So I've always been a Ferrari fan. That doesn't mean I don't like the other teams on the, in the field. Yeah. They're all fantastic. It's great to see some of these other teams stepping it up now this oh, year. Yeah. We've known what's going to happen in the race for eight years. This year, we don't know. That middle pack is a lot further forward. Oh, yeah. And, and the McLaren Super, they weren't particularly great in qualifying, but they did a fantastic job here. Yeah, they, they, they drove up into what's fifth and sixth, I believe it yep, was, yep, with, uh, with, uh, with Lando Norris and uh, Dan Ricardo. Yep. Great drive by them, but we should move back a little bit and talk about why what happened to Max and that big strategy move to right. pit him for some fresh tires. Yeah. You know, pit from the lead. You know, they they did the they did the uh, uh, turnover in the pit cycles, and Max was able to get the lead, but he recognized that those tires were not going to make it, or Chris Warner recognized and yeah. their status, the strategy. Tough call to make. I mean, track positions, everything. Tough call to make the pit from the lead, put on fresh, I believe it was sticker yellows. Yeah, uh, uh, they were actually scrubbed. Really scrubbed. scrubbed. Yeah, even, scrubbed. Even, yeah. even, even a scarier So scrubbing and they used them in qualifying, you know, the day before. So, I mean, Max had to really drive the wheels off that car, and he was closing at two seconds a lap, and this is where I have to kind of talk about or ask about what Mercedes did. 
Yeah. Because I mean, I I mean, I've never seen Mercedes make such a blunder right. and not pitting at least one of their drivers, Lewis Hamilton or Valtteri Bottas. Yeah, it was very yeah. sad. I, I feel like they left Valtteri Bottas out there to be blocking back, you know, and that there was no good reason for them to leave him out there. But we should digress a little bit. That middle stint, so Max was in the lead. Uh, Max was in the lead. Hamilton was all over him in that middle stint, and. Basically, Max came in, I think it was about lap 30, 30, 33. Yeah. Uh, so Max went in, uh, and the undercut was really powerful. Right. Undercut meaning when you go in, put fresh tires on, you go out, do a two second lap faster than anyone else, and you're gonna be two seconds faster down the road. So Max uh, went in, uh, and Christian Horner made that call, bring him in, uh, and he was worried that the tires weren't gonna last. It ended up being the call of the race. Absolutely, it was a split, split strategy because Carlos, or excuse me, Sergio Perez was, I mean, we saw him kind of fading a little bit early, but he was conserving those tires. So right. they, they kind of had an idea that they might need to change their strategy and go to a two-stop strategy for Max right. or Sergio. Uh, they went with Max to lead, and Sergio, you know, doing the German work, nursed his tires along like we all know he can. <laughs> and, you know, he kept moving forward, forward, forward. It was fantastic. Yeah, you it know, really was. He did an amazing down. job. And he went a little bit longer than everyone else. And like you said, he nursed those tires. And he, I think he had a, a seven-lap advantage over everyone else from he that did. point further. He, he was able to finish at one uh, and only one pit stop. So Max made his stop. Like you said, he was two seconds a lap faster uh, in that last part of the race. And then it started to slow down a little bit. His tires got a little, you know, worn. Then it was one second, and everyone was looking at their watches like, is he going to catch uh, Hamilton? Is he not? Uh, they left Valtteri Botas, in my opinion, out there to try and block him, and yeah. it was a complete disaster. Well, he'd, he'd been complaining for 15 laps prior to that, there's no way these tires are going to make it. There's no way these tires are going to make it. And they didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> for neither of them. I mean, for Lewis and Valtteri, they just... They're, they're tire, the tires fell away for them. Uh, they did not get that long run performance that they were hoping for. And probably that morning rain and the yeah. higher pressures had a lot to do with that. Um, so as we moved back. along in the race, it, so it got to the point, 10 laps to go. Uh, Max, of course, Perez let Max go, right. which was exactly what he should have done. He didn't slow him down at all. Uh, although I thought it was a little odd that Perez gave him so much room that Max <laughs> immediately had two second lead. Like, Paris should have got a toe from Max. At least yeah, for you know it's funny. I saw <laughs> the same thing. It's like, why is he underneath his wing and just yeah. opening and opening up the uh, DRS? So that was a little, uh, a little odd. And then Max made short work uh, to pass uh, uh, for second place, Valtteri Bottas. Bottas tires were done. Who put up a valiant fight? I mean, offline in the marbles, and he was still trying to hang on to that he car. Was. Yeah. That was a piece of driving. That was actually, in my opinion. The finest piece of driving in the race. Yeah. The Autry was on the outside of that long sweeper. Oh, in the barbell, yeah. somehow yeah. hanging on to Trying to hang on. Yeah, yeah. That was, that the was guys got a lot of grit. Oh. And, and you feel bad for him when you they did. leave him out there as the blocking guy. Right. I mean, I hate to say it, Valtteri Botas fans, I mean, we love Valtteri. But they basically left him out there as the blocking guy. You know, so, and I, I want to go to the what I think is the second bad call for Mercedes and not bringing Valtteri Botas in at this time. Max Verstappen has the fastest lap of the race, so he's going to get that extra bonus point. Right. Valtteri's now running in fourth place. It's a 50-second gap to right. fifth place, yeah. and there's plenty of time to come in, get even a scrub set of tires, and push him out for a hot lap Absolutely. and steal that point. I mean, that one point could be huge a difference year. Year. every year. We've seen that before, yeah. where one point, you know. That made no sense. Year. They had four laps to bring him in. Valtteri Bottas could have got the fastest lap of the race easily. He wouldn't have sacrificed uh, fourth place. Made no sense. But ultimately, Max, it got down to five laps to go, four laps to go, three laps to go, two laps to go. Uh, and that's, I think, when uh, Max put the move on Hamilton for the lead. I, I was surprised that Hamilton didn't fight him. Yeah, I think he just knew. The writing was on the wall. He was either going to take the both out, or, which no one wants to see, you know, Anika Rosberg, Lewis Hamilton fuffle again. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that was right. awful a few years right, back. Right. And uh, I think Lewis, uh, you know, it, it did the right thing. You yeah. know, I mean, it, it 
it was a, there was no chance. He didn't yeah. have a chance. The, you know, Max was that much faster. I mean, as a matter of fact, I think Max actually slowed down for a few laps as he was closing because he was closing so fast. He was. I bet he got the call to hey, take it easy, man. You're gonna get there. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. get there. You need a little. You need to save a little bit of tire for, for the pass. It was a little odd time. because with like five, six laps to go, he wasn't really, he was still five seconds back. And I think and he that didn't was, really make up much in those couple laps. I was worried, I was like, oh no, his tires are done. Right. And I didn't think it was going to be a close race. I didn't care who won, I just want to see a competitive Formula 1 race like that. Right. And, and I think Max probably laid back a little bit because that, that dirty air uh, has played a huge, huge part in the race. Um, but we know what happened. Max Verstappen wins the race. Lewis Hamilton hangs on for second place. Sergio Perez puts the second Red Bull on the podium. Red Bull has a commanding lead in the team championship. Amazing. Max the jumped up quite the champion, constructors championship. Max has, has got a now a pretty sizable lead uh, in the drivers championship. But things are really interesting a little bit further back. I mean, oh, absolutely. You know, and I think. Uh, I think we need to mention Sergio Perez. Like, what a move putting Sergio Perez in that second Red Bull. Yeah. I mean, that's the courtesy in a way. Yes. But Alex Albon just, you know, loved the guy, but he just wasn't cutting it last year. And look at the difference it's made. I mean, granted, the car is a lot better this year. Yeah. But to put a, a someone in like Perez, who just saves his tires, is He's always mature. there at the end. He's, He's mature. Very mature. You know, I mean, Gasly, when he was with Red Bull, and, and then Ocon, they were both young drivers. Yeah. They were trying really hard. We see a little bit of that in... Sonoda, right. who's trying to out overdrive the vehicle a little bit. Yeah. Um, fantastic driver, but he's you know he's making a couple of mistakes. I mean that that mistake in qualifying, I right. believe it was on turn one, yeah. was pretty dramatic. Um, you know, but but we got to look at we got to talk about the McLarens. I think that was a fantastic drive by both uh, Danny Ricardo and yeah. Lando Norris. They put the cards up into fifth and sixth. Yep. Um, you know, a little bit further back, we have Fernando Alonso in the Alpine. I, again, here's a guy with years of experience, and he's been away from the sport a little bit, and the cars have changed dramatically. But that was that's a hell of a drive for the Alpine. When you look at the other ones, I think back in 13th yeah, place, it there wasn't, was, wasn't even close. Wasn't even close. So, so it was going to bring us to our next section of the show, where, where we just have a couple more to go, a couple more uh, segments. Um, this is outperform, underperform. So I guess you just kind of answered the question. Outperform was McLaren. No, not for me. <laughs> oh, Honestly, okay. not for me. I, you know, I, it's and this is the second race in a row that that uh, um, Austin Martin has flipped the switch on the strategy and gone completely different than everybody else. And they did it again here in in Paul Ricard. Right. And they drove both cars. Look, Lance Stroll started dead last. Yeah. Dead last. He, well, actually, Sonoda started from the pit, so technically he moved up one spot there. But he moved that car ten uh, places up in the race to score points from last place. It, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. Very and, impressive. and then also for those of you who didn't watch the race and you're kind of getting a recap from us, Bell went long. I mean, Bell started the race with some hard tires. And uh, he went way deep into the race. It was running as high as fourth for a while, which yeah. is just unreal. Oh, really? If you think about the last race was second, he was fifth at Monaco. Like, talk about outperforming. Like, yeah. Vettel is outperforming right now. Way outperforming. On, on a car that probably was having a little bit of trouble with the circumstances in the, at this track. Yeah. And outperformed. And that, that's why I think it's a team effort on this one. You know, Max Verstappen got driver of the day, but I really want to give a nod to to uh, to Austin Martin for team drive of the day because it put Sebastian Vettel ninth place, Lance Stroll in tenth place. Great drive of them for both of them. They both moved forward. Lance uh, Vettel moved forward five space places, I believe. Yep. And uh, Stroll moved forward ten places to score points. That's that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Oh, that was amazing. So you're uh, outperformer of the day and you're underperformer of the day. Oh my gosh. Well, I, it's hard. I don't want to pick an under. Well, Ferrari. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I mean, yeah. they, they just they, they marched their way to the back of the pack as quickly as they could. Unfortunately, they joined the other Ferrari engines in the in the uh, Alfa Romeos right. at thirteen or 14, 15, 16. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, a very sad day for Ferrari Motors. Um, I mean, you know, P, uh, 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 excuse me, Kimi Raikkonen and Giovinazzi did a great job driving the car, but they just could not move that car forward. Signs. I mean, it was sad to watch. It was, uh, and, and I agree with you, that was my underperformer was Ferrari, unfortunately, and 
Uh, we love our fans in uh, Italy, but definitely was uh, not their race. Oh, I mean, if there's a race to go to, you've got to go to Monza. Agreed. I mean, <laughs> Tifosi, it's insane. It's a great track. You've got to do the parabolic of mash to the front straightaway for the podiums. It's absolutely just balls, Amazing. Just balls crazy. Yeah. It's balls crazy. Um, but we have a great race coming up next oh, week. Oh, you know what I was just going to say? Before we get off to that, outperformer for me oh, yeah. uh, was... Uh, Believe it or not, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to get hate for this, but I think uh, Lewis Hamilton outperformed. I mean, granted, his car is amazing, yeah. but he was left on shredded tires, basically. I mean, he had nothing, and he was still putting in his fastest laps at the end of the race. Yeah. So Hamilton did a fantastic job. He, I mean, he, the guy's got, obviously, he's got skills. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's sick of seeing Hamilton and Mercedes win every single race, but they left him out to dry. There was nothing they could do. and uh, Well, there was. Well, they just did it. Well, but it was too late. <laughs> they would have had uh, Hamilton would have had to try to undercut on the yeah. second pit stop. Yeah, it's the only way they had any chance at all. Yeah. And they probably should have done it because the Honda, the Max's Honda, was too fast in the straightaway. It really was. Yeah. It was uh, and that's, awesome. That's, that's, but we'll go on to uh, next weekend. Yeah, we're we're going to Austria for the Red Bull Ring, and I got to tell you, this is another one of my favorite. Well, they're all my favorite tracks. So there's an F1 race that I wouldn't go see. Uh, Austria is amazing. You were mentioning it earlier that's one of the ones you like to like to play in the simulator. Oh yeah, um, my project cars and I racing. Those are that's my favorite track, the Red Bull Ring. I, I always do well there. It's an amazing track. I haven't been there. You were there. Yeah, right? I've been there a few times now, few and times. it's it's amazing. Uh, Nettlefield is located uh, right between Wien and Graz, two major cities. You're not going to get a place to stay unless you spend a lot of money in Nettlefield because there aren't any hotels there. Um, but it's a great track, it's a great adventure, and from a, from a spectator standpoint, you can see so much of the track from just about everywhere. Make the hike up to the old church at the top of the track, uh, the, the Red Bull statue that's right there in the middle. I mean, you can see so much of the race from there that it's, it is worth going. And it's clean, clean, clean. What did I say? Is it clean? It's, it's clean. Yeah. clean. I mean, there isn't a filthy toilet at the Red Bull Ring. It's awesome. You gotta go. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, speaking of the Red Bull Ring, I think other drivers are gonna really push to the front of the race. We're going to slightly shorter straightaways. Yeah. Not gonna have the same advantage with the high speed car. I think so. That's exactly right. You don't have those long movement. There's a couple decent sized straightaways for sure, but there's not a whole lot. It's and, not uh, like it's not like public car. With rain expected, I mean we're six days off, but we're expecting rain. For oh, it race. always rains. So at some point <laughs> it's gonna rain. And like last year was amazing. Race. Oh, fantastic. So, and. Uh, Lando, I think he did a last lap pass to get on the podium. He did, he did. So he did a was, couple passes in the last few laps. That was pretty spectacular. So I'm really looking forward to that race. Um, one quick thing before we wrap up, we want to thank our friends at Neft to Vodka. I'm sure there's, you know, we'll create all sorts of fun drinking games well, oh, using yeah. Vodka. So we want to thank those guys. Also, Toco Warranty Company. Uh, it's for your car. You can get a warranty for pretty much any car that's built in the last 20 years. So that's really a fantastic uh, service. Absolutely. And of course, Blender's Eyewear, they keep our eyes protected in sunny days. Uh, of course, we're inside right now, so I have to, I'm wearing mine on my shirt right here. Uh, check them out though, Blender's Eyewear, they're fantastic. And we really thank all of our partners for making this possible today. Any last thoughts, Charlie? Uh, I'm looking, there's the uh, Monza High Banks. <laughs> I, know. And, uh, I saw a Red Bull ring picture pop up there. It was the, they have a giant Red Bull pole in the yeah. center of the track. Is that correct? Yeah. I saw it pop up. That so. is a great spot to watch the race. Yeah. It is fantastic because you can see, except for the start line, you can see just about everything yeah. from that statue. And I think looking forward to that race just real quick, I mean, it can really be. Mercedes, it could be, you know, Red Bull, it could be Ferrari, it could be McLaren. So I'm really excited about this. I'm looking race. forward to seeing the Ferraris move forward at this race in the race. I think they're going to be much closer to the sharp end of the, of the stick in this, in this case. But so will, like you just said, McLaren, so will the Alcataris. And yeah. I think, you know, we should really watch Alonso because this is a track he has a lot of experience with. Right. And I don't know. There's, there's I watch for watch for Vettel. Watch them all. It's gonna be great. <laughs> and yeah, and that's the great thing about this year. Like we said at the start of the broadcast, is uh, you know, it's this year. You wake up on Sunday morning, and you really don't know who's gonna win, and that's what's really outstanding about this year's uh, uh, championship. 
But uh, I think that's basically a wrap for today. Yeah. And uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. We're going to be back here next Monday night live at 9 p.m. Not late at 9.28. At <laughs> 9 p.m. We'll be here live next week. Uh, and uh, if you have any comments, uh, we're also going to record this and put it on YouTube. If you have any comments, put down your comments. We'll be happy to return. Miss Kelly Frank had one question. What was your favorite part of the most recent F1 race? Uh, okay, my favorite part uh, was the drama of not knowing whether Max Verstappen was going to uh, actually catch um, uh, Lewis at the end. It looked like he was going to catch him, and then he kind of stalled out five laps from the end. So I was on the edge of my seat for the last five laps. And I was, I was really shocked he caught him as fast as he did. That was, yeah, that's, it's hard not to pick that. Um, you know, I got to say, watching, watching Alonzo battle it out with these young kids in the middle of the race, that was really exciting for me. Alonzo's just got such skill. He puts the car where he wants to. And just, it's really exciting to watch Alonzo drive. And so for me, you know, it wasn't dramatic, but for me, that was probably about the best part of the yeah, feel free to keep your comments going, put them up on YouTube, and uh, we'll certainly re respond to all those comments. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next Monday night, 9 p.m. Pacific time. What is that about? 5 a.m. and uh, on the night. <laughs> 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 so you're gonna have to get up Just in time for Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks for tuning in.